Welcome back, everybody. It is 3.02 p.m. October 8th, 2017. All right, I have a separate video I'm going to upload in about an hour, hour and a half, um, going into what Nate is actually doing right now, uh, the effects of Nate. Now, very interesting, guys. We never got an eye wall from Nate. Um, it never really broke that 90 to 95 mile an hour sustained winds. It did uh, have gusts over 100, but those really calmed down before landfall. There was some uh, minor uh, damage, if you want to call it that, in these areas. The storm surge was uh, almost 50% of what it was expected to be. Um, if you were watching the Weather Channel, it almost seemed to me like some of the people that were reporting in some of these areas were almost disappointed that this storm was... Nothing like they said it was going to be. Um, that is a good thing, guys. Don't get me wrong. That's a very good thing. We have lucked out with two storms in a row now. Um, Nate being one of them because of the speed it was moving. Fastest moving storm basically in history right now. Fastest moving named tropical storm or hurricane um, as far as its path went. Not wind speed, obviously. It was only a Category 1, but the movement of it. And that really saved the whole coastline of uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and the Panhandle, guys. And the same thing happened with Irma. Irma was projected to be a Cat 5 when they said it was going to pass over the Keys and then wipe out the west coast of Florida. Now, because it made landfall about 30 hours before it made that northern turn, Cuba literally saved the west coast of Florida by being where it is. So we lucked out big time with that storm. And then also with Nate. Uh, Nate was projected to be a lot bigger than it was, um, at least going into the last 48 hours. They were preparing for a Cat 2 to 3 um, because it just it kept picking up speed uh, very quickly. But again, the movement of Nate really uh, saved the coast here because it was moving almost 30 miles an hour, didn't have time to really form correctly or sit over water long enough to develop. It would have easily been a major hurricane. There's no doubt about that. But we didn't even see an eye wall with Nate, and I thought that was very interesting. Even though it's moving quickly, and some of the front end clouds, the northern clouds of the system, may have been wind sheared to the, the center of it, blocking the eye wall. I don't know, I just find that very interesting. We never really saw an eye wall. You saw half of one on the radar charts, and that's why they were um, pushing the idea that uh, Nate was a an east side storm. There was not really much going on on the west side of the storm. So again, very odd storm, very weird. It was uh, interesting tracking it, but uh, as of right now, what it's going to do is it's going to move up. It's going to pass over, it looks like West Virginia, uh, the southwest areas of Pennsylvania, and then possibly over New York, but nothing more than rain and wind systems. Nothing really crazy. I don't see any more uh, terrible weather coming out of Nate unless it spawns any sort of tornadoes here with these bands, which would be in areas of Georgia and South Carolina. Once it gets up into about this area, I don't see that being a threat much longer. But I will dig into Nate a little more a little bit later, but I have some stuff I really want to show you that um, we have going on in the next two weeks, possibly. All right, this is our current water vapor chart, and this is the stuff I want to point out for you for the possible near future. Now, this system I pointed out last night, uh, we spoke about this a little bit. I was waiting to see how these storms were beginning to form, and they are beginning to collect with each other. It is trying to do that forward movement, that uh, beginning roll of a counterclockwise movement. So I do expect this to become a disturbance on the map. It hasn't shown up yet. The only disturbance we have so far is right here in the top right corner uh, with that 70% number. So this may very well become Ophelia, but that doesn't mean it's going to affect the U.S. It may get a name, and it may just be pushed out up and towards the area of Ireland, once again, because of our jet stream. I'm going to tie the jet stream into this and why I think this may become an issue. I hope not, but it looks like it may, and I'm going to show you why. Now, if you notice, the water vapor coming off of South America seems to have a northern movement. It is being a little affected by the spin here, if you can see that. The water vapor is pulling off this way on this system, and you can see some of this is moving north, and then it wants to bend up in this area and may get caught up in here. But again, the movement here moving north, this coming south, is causing these storms here to stay still. And what that's showing me is that eventually it's going to influence this to sit still in a way. And that may develop it to start turning in a counterclockwise motion. And the reason I'm pointing this out is because um, even last night, the GFS and the CMC models did not recognize, it, recognize this at all, but now they are. 
and it's becoming an issue at least for areas near the Bahamas in one model and then in another model it shows it passing over Florida moving into the Gulf and becoming a significant storm again it's a ways away it's subject to change we all know this but again it's worth pointing out so again here is the system that's unnamed there's another system right here which would be our second system that is unnamed and then there's another one coming off the west coast of Africa which may be named or at least recognized as a, uh, a disturbance and I'm gonna point all these out on another chart we're gonna go back to our radar color chart here now you can see these storms are beginning to blow up it's beginning to organize and that upward movement here and the southern movement here is gonna meet somewhere basically right across the middle of Puerto Rico now this may stop this storm in its tracks and keep it over water allowing it to start spinning and that's what the models are starting to recognize uh, they are also recognizing this as becoming a system as well as what's coming off of the west coast of Africa. Now that does not mean they're going to become storms and they're going to become a threat. It just means that they're showing up as low pressures and there's a possibility. But again, the charts and the models are recognizing this one here specifically to become a significant storm. Again, 70% chance up here that is noticed will more than likely get pulled away by the jet stream. Now let's go on to the models here is the GFS this is current time you can see this low down here is already being recognized that is this one right here that we said will probably be recognized this one more than likely but it's not on the chart you don't see anything here yet but as we move forward in time you'll notice right there so that's the system that I'm talking about that comes down and meets and stops right over uh, Puerto Rico and then begins to spin and then the GFS has it moving back north and then east into the pocket of Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. Now according to the GFS it makes it this far before being pulled out by the jet stream as you can see. It then gets pulled out, it never really develops and that's that. Now I have the jet stream pulled up too. We're gonna go over this and I'm gonna explain to you why this may not be influenced by the jet stream. We're gonna look so as I move more forward with the GFS, they don't show any more disturbances really, except for a low popping up off of the north coast of South America, possibly going over Dominican Republic. But that's not for this video. Now I'm going to switch to the CMC. And now this is what I'm concerned about. I'm going to backtrack all the way to Nate making landfall, which is right here. Now again, to match this up, here is our 70% uh, notice depression. We have one coming off of the west coast of Africa, we have one sitting here, and then the one I'm concerned about is right here. And you'll see these pop up on the chart as I move forward. There we go. Here's the one that I'm talking about that is down in this area, still not recognizing the one over Puerto Rico, but here's that west coast of Africa storm that we just said was going to come off, and here's our 70% depression move forward there it is this is the one that I'm talking about that came down over Puerto Rico began to spin got influenced a little bit and almost got pushed to the west uh, the west by this storm now this is where the concern comes in because you can see this 70 percent one gets pulled up by the jet stream these two kinda linger in the middle of the Atlantic and pull a little bit of a Fujiwara but look at what the CMC says now the GFS had this coming into the pocket and then getting pulled out but the CMC has this happening it moves over the Bahamas not so much formed yet across the Keys in the south tip of Florida and then it gets into the Gulf and then check that out it sits in the Gulf it, it's almost a dead stop it forms becomes a significant storm right now at that 7 or the 982 and then goes to 979 that's a much lower pressure than we saw Nate hit so this may become a significant storm again guys to keep you all reminded this is the uh, this is October 18th 10 days in the future this is subject to change obviously but it's definitely worth noting that now these charts are picking up this low even though it hasn't even been recognized on the charts yet this is something we pointed out last night that looked like it was forming and according to the CMC and the GFS it's gonna form but the CMC is showing a lot of activity in the Atlantic we have one two three four systems four low systems lows are attracted to lows going on in the Atlantic all while being told that the Caribbean and the Gulf is where all these storms should be forming so it's just it's it's going against the uh, narrative basically 
uh, telling us that the Atlantic is not busy when it clearly is busy. So this is what we need to watch, is this low that is about to drop over Puerto Rico. It's right here. So we have this system that comes up and almost pushes this up into this area. And then we don't know what's going to happen. It may come up towards Florida and then get pulled out. It may not form at all. But again, it's worth watching, guys. All right, I will have another update shortly. Oh, wait, sorry. I'm going to show you the jet stream. Now, the reason that this storm that's uh, above Puerto Rico may not get influenced by the jet stream is just look how high it is. I'm going to back up to zero hour, which is current. Sorry about the clicks, guys. I'm working on it. I'm getting a new editing program, so it won't be much longer. All right, and we're at current time right now. So you can see the system's being recognized a little bit on the jet stream model. But as I move forward, you can see the jet stream is moving really high. This area is going to pull up north. And it's going to have minimal influence on anything that's parallel, basically, with the uh, Dominican Republic or Puerto Rico. So that 70% system clearly gets pulled up by the jet stream momentum. But you can see, this thing wants to sit here for a while. And it does, and then the jet stream is continuously lifting north. And it almost flattens out. And you can see the entire system around where this storm would be is moving in a counterclockwise motion. So it's not being influenced by the jet stream. And this is where you saw it sit in the pocket of Florida and then eventually got pulled out, probably because of this low area here, which might not have a lot of influence. We don't know yet. We have to wait. It's going to be about five, six days before we know for sure. And according to this, that same system gets pulled out by the jet stream, but again, the CMC has it moving into the Gulf, reforming as a significant storm, and then backtracking over Florida from west to east once again. So, that's what I have for you for now, guys. I hope everyone had a good night. Enjoy your holiday. I will have an update later on today. Thank you all very much.